This video recording is showing you how to actually cite websites. Many books and other print sources like magazines or newspapers are a little easier to cite because the elements um, normally stay the same. But when it comes to websites, you never know. Sometimes you're going to be able to find an author, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're going to be able to find when it was published, sometimes you can't. So we're going to go over um, how to cite a website and to look for each one of these elements. So before we get started, I actually have this MLA organizer, which you use here at the middle school, and I'm going to block out a couple of these areas because there are areas that we don't normally find in, on online sources. So uh, contributors, version, number, you will usually not find these on websites because number one, they're constantly changing and sometimes there's multiple, like contributors or really has to do with more like people that write a forward or do illustrations and that's something you will not see on websites. So what we're really looking for when we're citing online sources is an author, a title of source, which is the page or the article online that you're reading, the container, so the title of the actual website, the publisher, the company that published this website, the date that this um, website or web page was last updated is what you want first. If not that, when that article was posted, and if we can't find when it was posted, then the final thing is to look for that copyright date. And the final thing, you will have this on every single source you get offline, and that is the URL, the location, the Uniform Resource Locator. And this is not simply history.com, it's not google.com or bing.com, okay? It's the actual web address to go to that very page, that very article that you read offline. So I'm going to access the internet here and actually go to my favorite search engine. There are many different ones that people use. And I'm going to look up information about the Statue of Liberty, about its history specifically. So I don't really want to go visit the place. I just want to know more about the history of this, place, this monument or this national park here in America. So this first source right here is a .org. Um, we have a Wikipedia article, there is parade.com, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to stay away from it because like parade, I don't, it just sounds, who knows what that's about. Um, there's history.com, which you're used to, um, how tall is the statue of liberty.org, okay. Um, another wonder of the worlds.net, ooh, here is a actual, um, nps.gov, so this is the National Park Service, so that might be a good one for us to look at. The Atlantic, the Vice, so LA Progressive, so there's some, some different sites we can look at. I'm going to go back up to this first one, because we talked about organizational sites before, and click on it, and it's going to tell me some information about engineering and construction, oh good, um, ooh, there's some cool pictures, um, the history of Liberty Island, and then also um, the preservation of this this um, historic monument. So that's good information I can use for my project that I'm doing about the Statue of Liberty, the information about the history. It even says Statue History right here. So going back to my graphic organizer, I need to find an author first. Well, if I go to my site, I do not see an author. I see donations and advertisements over here, but there is no author. So that happens sometimes on websites and that's okay. When you can't find an author, you just leave that portion blank. But the next thing I need is a title of source. So that is the article that I'm reading, the web page I'm reading, and that's the statue history because I could go to a different article. This one says about the statue and this changes, the information changes. The title of the container, the header does not change, but the source, the title of source, the page I'm reading information from is right here. So this is statue history. So I'm going to go back here and type in where it says title of source. And I'm going to change that font to Times New Roman or just so it's easier to read. Okay, statue of history. Now, already I mentioned at the top of this page where this we know is our title of container. This is the website title. So if you look at your graphic organizer, it says type in italics the name of the source information was found. Website. That's what I'm looking at. So I know that that's my title because once again, if I go to a different page, this changes. This does not. So it's the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island. I'm going to go back here and type that in. I'm going to put it in italics.
And there we go. There is my title of container and notice how it's slanted. So that way I know that that is my container title. If you're doing this by hand, you can always just write Statue of Liberty Ellis Island and then underline it. So that way you know that this is the important thing. So the next thing I need is a publisher because remember we don't need those other elements. So if I go back, I'm going to find my publisher at the bottom of the page. Right here next to the, co the copyright date, we have the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation Incorporated. So I'm going to write that. The Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation Inc. I'm going to make sure that's right. Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation Inc. Now, I also need to know when this website was post, uh, updated, posted, or what the copyright date is. So at the top of my article, I'm going to go back to my original article. There it goes. Usually they have a publication date up here, or when it was posted or updated, and I don't see one. And that's okay. Right next to that copyright date, at least we know that it was in 2018 that this site was has the copyright. So 2018. And then the next thing, the last thing we need is the location. So the uniform resource locator or the URL, that's the last thing that we need for our citation. So going back to the website, here's that URL, the web address. I'm just going to copy that. So control C the shortcut you can do. And then right here, I'm going to hit control V and that will paste Ooh, that citation into my document, which is pretty awesome. All right, so if you hit the space bar, that activates it. So if I wanted, if I really wanted to um, use this electronically, I can come back and click on that and it's active now, which is pretty awesome. All right, moving down, you'll know that during research, we want to use more than one source. So I'm going to go back to my Google search. And I put in Statue of Liberty plus History. Hit enter. Look at some of those other sources. Now, history.com is a good website to use because they've got some great information, but the information you need to create a citation um, is also. I'm going to stop this video first. Hold on. Because this is going to play background music, and I don't want it to. There we go, paused. All right, so at the bottom of this article, <laughs> there is citation information. So here's our article title. This is the title of source, Statue of Liberty. We have an author, in this instance is a corporate author, so it's history.com editors. The website name, this is also known as a container, is history. Here's your location, the URL, right there. I can also get it at the top of the page, right here. There's a date access, that means this is the date that we first visited the website. Many times um, teachers will ask you to put this in there as well and you'd put it at the end so this would go after location so we would know when you access the website. The publisher is right here as well. Last updated and original published date. So we have like three different dates here. So the date that you want to use is the last updated though. That's what we're going to put in our publication. So, so if we were creating a citation for this, you would put 21 August 2018 not the original published date because many different things have been added to this since 2009 and we wouldn't want to put the copyright date because this just says the year 2018 which is great but we want to know when this information was last updated so just a note for you if you're using something that has citation information on here you know what elements you need you can easily pick it out from here to create your citation but i'm going to find a website that doesn't have a citation information right in front of me and remember we looked at there was a .gov site, which would be a great source of information. Here it is, the French Connection. Sounds good. So this is going to take me to an article about the Statue of Liberty and specifically the French Connection. So um, talking about that connection with France and how it was a gift from them to us. So we have a picture, we have some information, the wonderful French um, politician here. And we have when it was last updated. That's pretty cool. I don't see an author. 
but that's okay. We don't have to have an author. We have other information in here. So we know that this is the name of our article we're looking at, the French Connection. I know that because I can click on here and it goes to some other information, some a different page, but this changes, it just says stories. So we want to go back to our original. Okay, so French Connection is the name of the page I was looking at. So we're skipping this one because we couldn't find it. Oops. Period. Title of container. I need to know the name of my website. So we're going to go back to that and find out what the name of the website is, the container. If you notice when we clicked on some other things, this changed, but something up here didn't change. And if I want to go somewhere else, so let's say on this website, I want to go to see a different page within the website. Notice the information, news releases, things like that. I can go down here as well. I want to go to a uh, contact us page. No, wait, there was a slight change. Did you notice it? This says about us now. But what didn't change? So if we go to this web page, we go back to the top. Here's our header, but then here. So what would be the actual name of our container? If you said National Park Service, you would be correct. So it, this is a little trick here, and that's okay. That happens. It's the name of our container. We don't need these three, so we're going to go down to Publisher. We're going to find the publisher. Well, we're in the contact page. It says we want to get more information about the National Park Service. We can find out more about them. Look, it says National Park Service down here as well. So for our publisher, you guessed it, we're going to have to write down National Park Service again. Now, here, this is going to stay in Times New Roman. They both are. But this one, we also have to make sure it's italicized because in this instance, it's the container. Here, it's the publisher. Yes, you have to put it down twice because sometimes that does happen where the container and the publisher is the same thing. We're going to go back to our web page, the original article, and we need to write down when this article was published and when it was last updated. And it did tell us right here, June 7th, 2018. And remember for when we're doing MLA, we have to do the month or the day, the month, and then the year. Sorry, the day, the month, and then the year. And then the final thing that we're going to need right here is our URL, our location. So I can go directly to this website. So I need that entire URL, not a portion of it, the entire URL needs to be on my works cited so that it can be accessed easily. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you locate your different elements for a website. Like I said, sometimes you can't find everything. If you can find the author, great. If not, move on. If you're struggling to locate what the container is or try to figure out when it was published, just ask and I'm here to help you.